So I'm here to talk to you about change, but more specifically about building a community to drive change. And I'd like to do that through telling you a little bit about my personal story. So for the last 10 years, I've spent my professional career in the solar industry, an industry where we were forced to build communities to survive, let alone thrive. But more important than my time in the solar industry is the fact that I'm a husband and a father to two little boys. And so as a father to two little boys, these days I only know one way to tell a story. And it goes a little like this. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was a young prince facing an insurmountable challenge. I'll stop there. It wasn't that far away, actually. It was here in San Luis Obispo, and I was young, but definitely not a prince. But the challenge at the time was definitely insurmountable. I had just joined a solar energy company in August of 2003. And I was quite proud of myself as I was joining as the director of sales. That was quite a title. The challenge? We had no salespeople to direct and no customers to direct our sales efforts towards. I was facing an uphill battle. I was definitely unprepared for what I was about to face. But you've all been there. We've been there before. We've been in those situations where we are ill-prepared to face the challenges that we are up against. For those of you that are parents, you'll be able to relate. I remember the very first time I walked into my oldest son Logan's room to change his diaper, and it was a total blowout. I mean, it was disgusting. I mean, I was not prepared to deal with this. There is no preparation in the world to prepare you for that. Or the time you sit down at a college exam, you haven't studied, you open the exam, and you go, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do. And this happens in our professional lives as well, where you're thrown into a job, where you're totally ill-prepared, to take on the challenge that's in front of you. In fact, it happens right in front of our eyes. <laughs> Fortunately for us, we're on, not on national television when these events occur. But nonetheless, we do face challenges that are insurmountable. So back to that time in 2003 when I just joined the solar industry. The industry at that time was extremely small, underfunded, a technology that was grossly overpriced and quite inefficient, and very few customers willing to adopt our technology. And we were forced to compete in an industry, one of the strongest industries in the world, the energy industry, and try to disrupt that to create a movement to bring clean technology to the world. So despite the fact that we were lacking some of the business fundamentals, we had three key things that were very difficult to compete with. We had the belief that the technology would improve and the industry would advance. We had the passion that this was necessary for the world. And we had the conviction that if not us, then whom? So this was a challenge that we were ill-prepared for, but we couldn't walk away from, unlike the referees who are now safe as of last evening. So what were we going to do about it? We needed to build a community of people to help support and drive that change forward. But it needed to be a community that could engage people emotionally, engage people rationally, and empower them to drive that change forward, to create the change we so desired to become part of a movement. And so what I'd like to talk about today is not about building communities, but engaging with people, engaging with people to build what I call a purpose-driven community, one where people are able to come together, share ideas, exchange their values with one core mission, but their own definition of what that community looks like. So in our industry, in the situation we were faced with, the first thing we recognized is we needed to engage with people here if we were going to be able to connect with them here. By definition, we needed to meet people where they are. And meeting people where they are for solar, I don't mean that in the physical sense, but I am not too proud to admit that I have spent lots of weekends standing in Costco, eating hot dogs, 
and talking to people about the benefits of solar, or sitting on people's couches, still scarred to this day about what their dogs have done to my leg, <laughs> talking about the benefits of solar. What I'm talking about in meeting people where they are is the ability to allow people to define their own emotional engagement around the why. Why do they want to become part of that community? What is their why? In solar, we had a very unique opportunity because for solar energy, people got to become part of that community for a variety of reasons. Maybe it was because they wanted to invest in a cool technology. They wanted to create a better planet and a better place for the next generation. They just wanted to save money or stick it to the man. It didn't matter. It was our obligation to create a community where we could allow the various whys to come together to create something bigger than themselves. But this is not unique to solar. In fact, one of the best examples of creating a community which drives emotional engagement in meeting people where they are is President Obama's 2008 campaign. You think about this campaign. The campaign slogan was, yes, we can. That's not even a complete sentence. But it was a piece of community building brilliancy. It was, yes, we can. Yes, we can become whatever you want. Yes, we can be what you think we need to be. So when you take a look at meeting people where they are, one of the core fundamentals of building community in order to achieve the emotional engagement, it's really about, in our experience, we needed to allow people to come become part of our community for the reasons that they thought were important, not that what we thought were important. The second thing we understood very quickly was in order to become a part of a purpose-driven community where you could not only drive small change, but you could become part of something bigger in creating a movement, is we had to lower the barriers to entry. I talked at the beginning that the industry was faced with a technology that was not very efficient and a price point that was quite expensive. So the key barrier we had to overcome and to lower was we needed to find a way to drive down the price and or create another mechanism for people to invest in solar energy. So into the community came a new set of community members, investors, financial organizations, big businesses that would create an alternative structure, an alternative way for people to become part of this community, thus lowering the barrier to entry. The ability to justify rationally what they really wanted to accomplish emotionally and become part of something that was bigger than them. Again, not a new concept, not something unique to solar. We've seen this in the automobile industry. We most recently saw it with a hybrid vehicle. You think about when hybrids first came out. Who didn't think a hybrid was cool? I mean, the golden rule of thumb if you were a Prius owner was you parked that thing in the driveway, never in the garage. I mean, that was a rite of passage. You're part of something cool. You're part of a movement. But the reality is the emotional engagement was here. But until the automobile manufacturers really had the ability to drive the rational justification, driving down costs, improving technology, and improving safety, did you really get to see the scale of that community being developed? But connecting with people emotionally while meeting them where they are and lowering the barriers to entry in order for them to rationally justify becoming part of something bigger than themselves is good. But it's truly not enough. It's good enough to build a small solar energy company on the Central Coast. It's good enough to build a team. But it's not forceful enough to create a movement. In order to create a movement through a purpose-driven community, you have to empower others. And by empowerment, I'm not referring to allowing people to do certain tasks. I'm referring to allowing them to share in the success and in the outcome. Empowering others means allowing people to participate in what the community is about, participate in the outcome, participate in that decision making in order to really drive that forward and become part of that community. We witnessed that in a very unplanned way. I remember the day pretty explicitly. I answered the phone from one of our customers calling who said, hey, Matthew, do you think it would be OK if we had a party at our house and invited all of our neighbors over so we could tell them about the benefits of solar energy? 
it was kind of a oh wow moment and kind of a free marketing moment we were kind of excited about. That was just the beginning. By empowering our community and letting them become part of that solution, change started occurring. People started putting signs in their front yard saying, I have a solar energy powered home. They were calling their local government officials and saying, we need to invest in solar in this community. Legislation was progressing. Tax credits were becoming involved. Big businesses were starting to invest in this sector because it was the right thing to do. They were emotionally engaged in the outcome, and they could rationally justify why we were trying to do it. We were almost there. Again, unintentional but very clear that the power of the outcome was something far larger than we could accomplish by ourselves. So, as we were able to allow our customers to participate, our community members, which, and by definition, I'm not referring to customers only, team members only, I'm referring to everybody that is able to participate and get behind an idea that is bigger than an individual, but shares a movement and a motion which is able to drive change. So has the solar industry and has we as an organization achieved that dream at the beginning where we shared the belief, we carried the passion, and had unbelievable conviction? No, we're not there yet. But has the industry seen success? Clearly. Solar has grown 1,600% in the last 10 years, employing hundreds of thousands of people. But it's not about solar. It's about the ability to create a community that has a purpose, that has the ability to engage with people emotionally, help them justify rationally and become empowered and part of that solution. So if I can leave you with anything here today, it's this. Invest in your community. Because what you can't accomplish as an individual, we can accomplish as a community. Find what that goal is. Find that change you're trying to become part of and emotionally engage and get people to engage emotionally. Break down those barriers, lower the barriers to entry, help rationalize, help justify what you're trying to accomplish. And then empower others to move that forward. It doesn't matter if it's a social cause, a business cause, or a personal cause. What we can't do as individuals, we can do as a community, and if we create communities to drive change, maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to live happily ever after. Thank you.